Welcome to our lecture online. So, how far is it to these quasars? By now we realize that quasars are really far away towards the far edges of the universe. And when we say the far edges, we talk about the visible portion of the universe. But can we really determine the distance? And the answer is not really, not accurately anyway. It's impossible to get an accurate distance to objects that are that far away. And let me explain why. So the problem is as follows. Let's say there's a quasar right here, which is billions of light years away at the moment that it's putting out its, its luminous light from the quasar. And the light travels towards our Milky Way galaxy at the speed of light. And of course, because the distance is billions of light years, it will take billions of years for the light to reach us. And if we can then, of course, calculate the recessional velocity by measuring the shift in the light, the Doppler shift in the light because the object is moving away from us as the light is, is uh, approaching us. And we can then say that the object will be traveling for billions of years at some recessional velocity. But of course, that velocity is not constant because as the universe is expanding more and more and more and more spaces between the objects, this object will travel faster and faster over those billions of years. It's not traveling as fast now as it will in the future as the expansion of the universe is, is accelerating and as the universe is getting larger, the more distance between galaxies, the faster it will be receding. So we really don't know where this object is today compared to was then when the light started from it that we're seeing today. So we really can't tell, we really can't calculate where exactly it will be. We can get a range on that, but not an exact value. So it's better to talk about the distance to faraway objects in terms of two things. First of all, the redshift. We can calculate the redshift, and of course, since they're moving, since they're moving so fast, the redshift will have relativistic aspects to it, and we'll see that in just a moment. And we can calculate the recessional velocity. So we can talk about the distance in terms of the redshift or in terms of the recessional velocity. And this is, how, and this is the reason why we can't calculate the distance accurately. In order to calculate the distance accurately, we need to have these one, two, three, four constants relatively accurately. What are those constants? Well, this is the Hubble constant, and of course you already know the Hubble constant is still not a true constant. We still don't know what the exact value is, so there's a certain amount of uncertainty there. Then we need the omega sub m, the omega sub, that should be a lambda, omega sub lambda, and an omega of the radiation. In other words, the energy equivalent of all the mass in the universe, including the dark matter, and of course, it's still trying to determine how much mass there is in the universe. Then, this is the energy equivalent of the dark energy, which seems to be pushing the universe apart, and we don't know that accurately either. And we have to have an accurate value of the energy equivalent of all the neutrinos and all the radiation left over in the universe. Those three together, plus the Hubble constant, are all necessary to calculate accurately how fast this will be moving from the place where it was then to the place where it is now. And that is, of course, quite an undertaking. And even though we have the equations, we just don't know what the parameters are. And we can put a range in for the parameters and get a range for the value of where it is at. So instead of doing that, we can calculate the redshift and we can calculate the recessional velocity. How do we calculate the redshift? Well, we call it the z-factor. The z-redshift is calculated by taking the observed wavelength of a particular gas like hydrogen, subtract from that the wavelength that the, that the light would be if the object wasn't moving at all, which is easy to establish in the laboratory, and we divide that by the wavelength if it wasn't moving at all. So this particular fraction, which can be written like this, wavelength observed divided by the wavelength if it was not moving, minus one, and that can also be calculated in terms of the velocity relative to the speed of light. So it is relatively easy to calculate the redshift. Once we know the redshift, we can then calculate the fraction of the velocity of the object relative to the speed of light. That is simply z plus 1 squared minus 1 divided by z plus 1 squared plus 1. This will be the fraction of the speed of the light. So in other words, we can very easily calculate the redshift, the z as we call it, and we can very easily calculate the recessional velocity. 
And that is why often you will see things such as quasars and their distances expressed in terms of z or expressed in terms of v, the fraction of the speed of light. For example, distances of quasars vary from 0.056c to 0.97c, actually a little bit more than 0.97c. And so that is distance expressed in terms of their recessional speeds, or we can turn it, we can express distance in terms of the redshift. And the redshift will be from a fraction of one to about seven point something. And so again, we express the distance in terms of z or the distance in terms of v rather than the actual distance, which is very difficult to calculate. So this is the energy equivalent of the mass, the energy equivalent of the uh, dark energy and the energy equivalent of all the radiation in the universe. Because the more mass there is in the universe, the more it will slow it down because there's more gravitational force. The more dark energy there is, the more it will push the universe apart. The more energy we have here, the more it will push the universe apart. And of course, the Hubble constant will tell you how fast the universe is expanding. So we don't need those to calculate how far the quasar is. But those are not in those equations. Oh, no. So these equations give you the distance in terms of the redshift and in terms of the velocity. So that doesn't give you distance. It just gives you how much the redshift is and how much the velocity is. And so most books will give you z or v, but will not give you the distance because they don't know the distance. Ah, because later on I will show you how to actually calculate it. More videos? More videos. <laughs> oh, so do we have a quasar in our Milky Way black hole? Nope, nope, it's dormant. Oh. Our, our big black hole is just sitting there not doing anything, much of anything. Just like the rest of us, right? Nah, kind of. <laughs> I'm hoping that we're doing something. <laughs>